Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, Mark. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, Mark. Okay, so we are still talking. Okay, I'll wait. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Okay, welcome to our Sabbath school this morning. And we're about to begin our song service. Let us all stand for prayer. Father, we want to give you thanks for allowing us to assemble in your courts. As we're about to sing song of praise to your high and holy name. Lord, help us that we may do it to the best of our ability. Hasten the footsteps of those who are coming that they will receive a blessing also. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Lord's a rock in him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Number 528. The Lord's a rock and him we are a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be time, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty, mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the bed. Shelter in the time of storm. We find in God our safe retreat. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty, mighty rock in a weary land. Cooling shade, Cooling shade on the burning sand. There's no light for the bed. A shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, a refuge dear. A shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our ever near. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty, mighty rock. Oh, my God. 
Warming up number 633. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Number 633. Number 294. I think we're doing um, special songs. I'm going to see if you guys are singing. Number 294. Would you be free from your burdens of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Would you or evil victories win? There is wonderful power in the blood. Okay, I'm going to come around with my mic. So you better sing. Oh! 
shall we all send for our opening song number 198. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace of the seed or sin and our guilt. 198. 109. Sorry, 109. 109. Jesus. Oh, what a special day. The seventh day of the week. A holy day. A sign of loyalty. A day of rest. A glorious day. A day of praise and worship. A day of study. A day to show compassion. A day of fellowship. Today, we are privileged to have the English Ministry Department of the Greater New York Conference sharing a day of fellowship with us. So on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Edley Benoit, and the Sabbath School Department, we would like to welcome you. We want to welcome our regular members, and we want to welcome those who are online. It's time to go. Are you going? Are you going? Those to the back, are you going? Well, I don't think I'm going. 
I'm not going. God will never use someone like me. You think I'm the best person to go? Do you think I'm qualified? I don't have the right weapon. I can't do this by myself. I don't even know those people out there. Mm. You want me to stop finding excuses? And if I do, God can use me as an instrument to fulfill his purposes? You are saying that when God stirs my spirit and he moves in my heart, I will no longer be able to sit back that I will set up and I will step in? You know that this will take you know that this will take an all out effort but I know that I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. Send me Lord. I will go. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. You want me to encourage someone to come along with me. I know exactly who I can carry. I am going to carry a youth. They are so talented. They are energetic. They are so talented. They are energetic. They are real. They are creative. They are impactful. They can help others in and out of their peer group. And this can just transform their very own lives. Wow. I am excited. Send me, Lord. Send me. I will go. Are you going? Are you going? Are you going? Let us stand for prayer. our heads, eternal and ever-loving Father, oh, we are so grateful that we are here in your presence. We thank you for your Sabbath, and we praise you, God, and we thank you that a long time ago, you sent your son, and he came, and he died for us. So this morning, we just want to say thank you. And we are letting you know that where you send us, we will go. Be with us here during this Sabbath school. We know your presence is here. So we ask the God that you will just massage our hearts and open up our hearts for everything that you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Please be seated. Sabbath blessing. On behalf of the Brooklyn area committee pastors, we just want to say thank you for being here this morning. And thank you, Brooklyn, for putting your program aside to accommodate us. So we are welcoming you here today, and we are so grateful, so grateful that you chose, you chose to be with us. Those of you online, we see you. Please don't go anywhere. We, uh, we have an inspiring program throughout the day. So we are asking you, as we go through the Sabbath school, as we go through the discussion, we are going to be asking you to participate. Write your answers in the chat. Write your questions in the chat. We want you to participate as if you are right here in the sanctuary. And those of you who are here, we are expecting you to participate. 
One more thing. Can you do us a favor? Send a link to someone and invite someone to either come here if they can make it here or just tune in. Again, on behalf of the Brooklyn pastors, we welcome you to our Brooklyn area convention. At this time, I'll just call all those who are supposed to be on the panel. If you're supposed, I'm going to ask you to come forward. Sister Campbell, I'm going to ask you to prepare to um, pray for us after we finish. Thank you. What we are going to do, we are going to just have a, a short discussion. We are asking you to participate. You, know, you study your lesson and you have all of the information. You still could participate, right? We are asking you to participate. We are going to be talking about the mission field. So here it is that we know that COVID had turned everything upside down. Church is not the same. Look, I, I can't even see the faces. Sister Campbell came in this, uh, this morning and she didn't even recognize me. I had to open my mouth and speak so she knew who I was, right? Because of the mask. So everything has changed. So we are going to talk about what's that for you? What can we do now? And how do we move forward? But before we do so, there are some handsome gentlemen on this platform with me. I'm going to ask them to just introduce themselves to you. By the way, I'm Pastor Everett Samuel. Uh, good morning, happy Sabbath. Uh, my name is CJ, or Carlton Parks Jr. I am a member of the Brooklyn Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm Donald Francis, and I am the pastor for the Great Dunamis SDA Church. My church. Okay, I am Elder Anston Roberts. I'm one of the elders of this Brooklyn Seventh-day Adventist Church. Okay. I'm sure you know uh, that you live in a great city. Can you see this book? And I'm, those of you who are online, you can see New York City, a symbol, right? Years ago, God inspired 
our Auntie Ellen, and gave her numerous visions about New York, about New York City, and the work that is supposed to be done in New York City. If you live in New York City and you've never read this book, I'm asking you please to get a copy and read it, New York City, a symbol. So here it is, we are commissioned, and she said that the work that we do in New York City is supposed to be a symbol around the world. After all, New York is the greatest financial, we have the financial industry here, fashion, everything you do, you come to New York. You know, you go someplace and you can tell a New Yorker. So, with that said, our church, the mission in our church is supposed to be the top of the line uh, that when people from other places visit, they will come to Brooklyn, they could go to Dunamis, they'll go to Maranatha, they'll go to one of our churches and see the work and say, oh, wait a minute, I can copy that. Well, COVID came and all of our plans went through the roof. So the first question I'm going to ask, what was church like for you during COVID? I guess I'm going first. Um, during COVID, um, church definitely drastically changed. Um, obviously, before it, you know, you come every Sabbath, you worship, you sing, give glory to God, and that, that's what church was. But then COVID hits. And for me, I mean, I've been a Seventh-day Adventist all my life, and I've gone to church every Sabbath all my life. I maybe missed a few. But to regularly not be in the building, like this building, every Sabbath, it's definitely a change. And one thing I saw was that I don't want to, well, I guess we were forced, but before this church didn't really have an online presence in terms of streaming a service and stuff like that. But then we were genuinely pushed to do so. We made drastic changes. We started live streaming our services. We had Pastor Benoit come during the week and preach his sermon by himself with a camera in front of himself. And then on the Sabbath, he would just stream it live. And that was, that was our services. Um, for the youth specifically, we had uh, our weekly studies in the morning on Zoom. And it was all the youth and we had, you know, my age youth, a bit older youth, and they would lead it out and we all give our thoughts about how our week was and we started giving tabs on each other. But Sabbath in general definitely changed. Being at home, I feel like there were more distractions for me. So keeping it within those lines of keeping the Sabbath day, keeping it holy, it was a challenge, I'll say that. So the way I got through it was definitely being with the youth in the morning through my weekly study, watching the pastor preach uh, throughout the, the, the live stream during the day. And then after that, it varied between watching another sermon, listening to gospel music, or even just sleeping. But uh, that was a big change for me. Okay, for me, uh during the pandemic, it exposed, it exposed the spiritual disciplines that were either present or absent. Uh, because now you are forced to understand God by yourself because you're on lockdown. <laughs> and uh, you do not have the opportunity to associate. Uh, it challenged you, or it challenged me uh, as a spiritual caregiver to think more and see if it is that church was actually meeting the needs of the persons under my care before because now the dynamics have changed and how is it that we are going to uh, reach, uh, maintain the spiritual feeding of the brethren. And for me, at one point, I was preaching so much on that thing called Zoom, I was Zoomed out. Um, it was a challenge. <laughs> Amen. I like that. Zoom out. <laughs> um, COVID, COVID, um, oh, what an experience. Um, being in New York City and doing ministry um, prior to COVID, uh, many of us here know that we run the end time ministry for many years in the city, you know, we, our ministry was linked twice a week, church and church avenue, meeting people, studying with people, 
and seen life change. And just prior to COVID, we had a little change. But when COVID came, man, COVID just exposed some serious crack in, in our armor. You know, we, we were never prepared for something like this. But by the grace of God, the Zoom, the Zoom helped us. But Zoom also, the COVID also to me, um, you know, I was having a, a conversation with my pastor, and I say that, you know, many as, as years as, as Adventists, we talk about the shifting. And we talk about the shifting in all different ways. To me, COVID was a shift, a, a sifting. It was a sifting in that m many of us, we, church was just a routine. And now we had to, to, to battle on our own. There wasn't no happy Sabbath. There was no just about coming to church, you know, looking good, smelling good. We had to face life by our, ourselves. And being a spiritual leader, it challenged me because I found myself falling asleep on Sabbath. On the messages, <laughs> good messages, but you're falling asleep, you know, because you're not accustomed with this, you know, and it was a challenge. But by God's grace, I saw it as an opportunity now to launch out into two different ministries. And it helped me now to, to look at ways that I can reach people. And Zoom, to me, has become a blessing. In, in, in and, just, and just to add to that, um, I think COVID was necessary for the church to understand that it is not an institution only, yes. but it's a movement Amen. and an organism. Yes. And so I think the church over the period of years would have become so institutionalized, and I right. use that guardedly, mm -hmm. uh, that it is just maintaining or in programs. Right. Uh, not assessing if it is that it is carrying out the gospel commission and COVID came and we recognized that all we were doing was just uh, maintaining and becoming fat on the gospel but we were not being effective to the world mm -hmm. and I thank God mm -hmm. that that has been exposed so that we'll take back our place in a religious circle that we have surrendered to other Christians since we say we have this gospel to the world. Amen. So I'm hearing that, that it's a movement. I'm hearing that ministry was started. I'm hearing that young people got together and studied. I'm hearing that it was also a destruction and we sleep. <laughs> There's no one who, who's, who's there to say, uh, wake up, yeah. touch your neighbor. There's That's no right. one to say that, yeah. you know? Um, but I want to know, what is your experience? Is there anyone in the audience who want to share? What is your experience? Do you have an experience that you want to share? We have the Robin mic, so. Anyone need a mic? If you need a, a mic, if you need to, to make a comment, we have. In, in the meanwhile, what, yeah, you can write your question, uh, a, a question, a comment. In the meanwhile, I want to share one experience and I'll go to the, to the next question with which is, what is the purpose of church? You can start thinking, what's the purpose of church? I, 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 I saw there's, there's a hand in the back while you get, get into that, back, to that person for time. Uh, there was one day I was looking at a service on, on YouTube, and someone sent me another link and said, this is a good sermon, listen to it. And I was about to, I'll take it, I, as I was about to switch, I heard this person say, sit there. Just wait. And it dawned on me, when you're switching from one thing to the next, you don't have time for the Holy Spirit to actually speak to you as, and what he was speaking to from that sermon. Because we are busy going from place to place to place, and there is no reflection. Learning comes when we are reflecting. Sometimes we need to sit with that one word and let the Holy Spirit just marinate it and just do what he has to do in our soul. And that was one of my experiences. That now, I listen to one sermon and I waited, get the message before I listen to anything else. Sis, go okay. ahead in the back. Good morning, Sister Everett and, and panel. Um, what, I, what I miss about in-person worship is that it's interactive. Mm -hmm. um, you had to sit in your house because you couldn't go out. I teach school, so there was no going out. So I 
miss the interaction with the saints. There's something about coming together in person that does not translate well into little Zoom boxes. Um, it did teach me discipline, however, because if I wanted to be a part of it, I really had to work at it. Yeah, so when we came back together, I've been completely happy, glad that to see actual faces. So I really value the in-person contact. Amen. Okay, thank Amen. you, thank you. Discipline, that's the word that I'm taking from that. It takes discipline. Do we had one more? Pastor Benoit? Go ahead. Go ahead, my dear. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, I, I just want to say that COVID had put a damp on everyone. But from my perspective of it, I think it draw us closer to God because a lot of times people just take church as just going regular. They just come to church like the pastor say, they just dressed up, smelled nice, come into church. But this was more deep for me because I got saved like just before COVID come in. Amen. And I thank God that I got saved because now if I didn't, I mean, I would be running to come to serve God because when you see what's going on right now in the world, it's not a plain game. You see, Christian, we have to take God really seriously. Mm -hmm. it's, you see, I take God so personally because I didn't know him, and mm -hmm. now I do. Yeah. I'm not here to play church or to warm bench or be lukewarm or, you know, I want to be hot for God. So COVID dropped out drastic on me. It brings me to a point that I was so stressed. I thought I was going to die when I see all that was going on. But mm. I thank God there is a God in heaven where we know, where we praise. I grew up in Adventist. I'm, I'm not an Adventist, but I'm trying to come back into the fold. Mm. And I thank God that I know who he is yeah, and man. who the God I'm serving. And let us all just don't take God see, like slightly, take him seriously. Because we spend so many times, you know, doing a lot of stuff. But when it comes to God, we want to just give him any and any all. We can't do that. We have to know who the God we serve. And like I said, I take him very personally. You understand? We have to search ourselves. And know that COVID come, it come, but God is in the midst of all. Amen. Everything that happened, God is in the midst. Nothing happened by accident. You understand? So just continue as we do what we do for God, because our reward will come one day. Praise Amen. God. Thanks Thank for sharing. You. Thank you. You know, one of the things that um, I'm a little bit concerned about, um, and I'm speaking about myself um, as um, within my responsibility as a, as a shepherd, is whether or not we're really taking advantage of the opportunity that is being offered to us by the disruption caused by COVID. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you why I'm saying this. There's no doubt in my mind that um, God is in the detail. Mm -hmm. uh, I never forgot this. Uh, he's actually sitting right here. He, at the time, he was my associate youth director. Now he's our communication director. He led a AY about a month and a half before COVID. And the title of the AY, what would you do if the church doors were closed? Hmm. And we sat there, I remember, and we were discussing, going back and forth about the possibilities. We should do this, what the focus should be, because I, I think I heard someone said, we get fat in the gospel, we sit there, it's comfortable, and I enjoy it. But the reality is, our work is not within those four walls. Amen. And so, uh, my concern, which I just mentioned in the beginning is, am I learning the lessons that COVID is giving me an opportunity to learn? which is to go out there and to do ministry. Yeah, sure, we can make this our weekly general conference session where we come together to give God praise, but this is not what this is all about. It's deeper than that. Amen. And so uh, we're trying certain things here at Brooklyn. Uh, we don't have uh, it uh, down packed, nowhere close, but uh, that's some of what I wanna hear. What can we do Amen. better? 
to really reach out to the folks that God is calling us to reach out to, and COVID is offering us that perfect opportunity. Amen. Amen. Okay. And that question, it's a good question to springboard into what's the purpose of church? What can we do? What is the purpose of church? Amen. And is church just our four walls? What's the purpose of church? Amen. All right, uh, I, I, was not, I think um, we know that, as our pastor Everett said, that looking at this New York City, the blueprint, when we look at uh, Ellen White and Inspirations, he said that the church is God's agency for the salvation of man. The church is really about, you know, spreading the good news of Jesus to the world. That's our purpose. We exist for that. Any other thing outside of that is failure. And so in doing that, we interact, we love each other, we express, we develop. And so I, develop, I, I understood that in New York City doing ministry that ministry is not really about saving people. The, the, it, the church is not really just about saving people. The church and the, the objective of the church in mission what I have understood personally is to teach us to love people as Jesus loved people. And so with that, when we go to love people, ministry becomes a joy. So we are very passionate with people. Look, I have people who I have been working with for years. You know, people who came up from the street, people who didn't know nothing about Christianity, didn't know nothing about the gospel. And they getting to know them and through ministry, they baptize, but still they haven't struggled. And for years I have been with them. Every week I will call and say, how are you this week? These people are facing, I'm talking about people who grew up in the hood. They didn't know nothing. But when we grow to love people through the church, it helps us reflect the character. And one thing that surprised me, I was dealing with one individual, and the individual said to me, first time in my life, I met somebody who believed in me. So the church teaches us to believe in people, as Christ believe in people. And that's the real purpose of the church. The real purpose of the church is to show the love of God to a, a dying world. If I may add to that, significantly I believe that the church is to mature people Christians come in with our faults, with our challenges, being matured as we behold Christ. And that maturity is to translate in making sure we use every opportunity available to us with the gifts in the church to put the gospel where people can reach it and receive it. Uh, and that means, and that, that's one of the areas I have been advocating when I was in Jamaica in, in, in ministry, to always have an online presence. I believe this with all of my heart. If they are on TikTok, we go on TikTok. If they are on Instagram, we go on Instagram. Wherever Amen. people are, yes. that's where we must put the gospel. Amen. People in COVID-19, and even now, people are not, people are, are not uh, driven to come back in a building. What are we going to do? If they are not coming back in the building we have to put the gospel where people can reach it and if it is that we are not putting it where people can reach it it means that we are failing in our commission to the world so we must be creative and it, it does not mean that we have to present the gospel like Ellen White says it must be presented in terms of the packaging that she outlined in her day that was her day this is a new age we have to package the gospel in a way that people can get it. If we are not packaging it, it's the same gospel, but the packaging is different. Because if you, this is what I've learned in communication and in psychology, if you are communicating and somebody is not receiving on the other end, end of the communication, communication did not happen. And I, I, I am concerned that we are, con we are constantly believing that we have to be apprentices in our style, that we forget that we must be Jesus in our presentation. Pastor Benoit, thank you, thank you. Just wanna piggyback on what uh, my, my colleague and friend just mentioned here. 
Folks, uh, the way uh, Jesus said it in the parable is, I was hungry, I was thirsty. He didn't say, well, uh, I needed to know about, you know, the third angel's message. In other words, what are my needs and how are you addressing my needs? Now, here's the reality. You spoke about, you know, the, the psychological aspect of it, uh, Pastor Francis. People who are dealing with issues in their lives, mm -hmm. you would think, oh, let's come to the church. No, the church is the last place they want to be because they see the church as a mirror who's going to reflect their issues and they are afraid, they are ashamed. But if we went to them, as COVID is now is forcing us to do, if we found a way to interact with them in a way that addressed their specific need without necessarily turning around and pulling out a Bible study, you would be shocked to see. In fact, I was, I, I was uh, at a church just last night and I ran into a, a young lady and uh, she told me about how she's now in church every single Sabbath. And she says, there was a visit that I made to her months and months and months before I left that church. Mm -hmm. And she says, from that visit, I was convicted that my place should be here. But she didn't make the decision then. Are you still with me? And so we, we cannot be afraid of going out and doing, matter of fact, one last thing I'll say on this note. Um, I have a, a young brother, uh, a, a brother um, with the Homeless Ministries. Brother Will. Brother Will Lawrence. He said, Pastor, come out with us because they have a ministry that started towards the homeless in the area. Folks, you, you have no idea. I, uh, the, 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 the thrill that it gave me just to interact face to face with these folks on the streets, kneeling next to that homeless person, putting my hands on him, praying with him all the while, giving him a sandwich or stew. That was powerful. We had people who, just because they saw some of what we were doing, they stopped us and said, would you give, do you have more food? And we're looking at the person like, what do you need food for? That's not for us to determine. But we were shocked that some people were saying, would you mind giving me a sandwich? It's, I think it's those small little things, and I can't be worried about, oh man, I didn't see him in church the, next, the following Sabbath, or the Sabbath after that, or the Sabbath after that. That is not the gospel. The gospel is, he had a need, I ministered to that need, and I tell him, listen, I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Uh, if you need me, I'll be here at the Brooklyn, but I'm, I'll be coming back around in the next couple of weeks. Amen. Only God knows what that's going to do. And if in five months, or a year, or two, this person ever walks in here, I'm giving God praise. If they did not, I did my part. Amen. And one of the things that I would want to say, <laughs> it's my conviction secretly, uh, that sometimes we need to close the doors of the church and two by two enter some homes, enter some communities, and reach people where they are. Sit Amen. on the streets, Amen. Amen. you know, and have conversations with people because this is where the gospel is. Every day before Jesus went, every Sabbath before Jesus went into church, I saw him on the streets talking to people, having conversation. Just a conversation, just a smile is powerful, just like preaching a sermon. Okay, for one of time, right, I want to switch to the next question. Okay. And we are, I'm getting that we're saying it's important to go out. I will go. That's our team. That's the theme, right? It's important to go out. It is important to meet people, to feed and to give the tracts and to do the Bible studies. It's, go, it's important to go out into the community. That's what Jesus did, right? He mingled with the people as one who desired their good. He met their needs and then he bid them follow. Now the question is, what happens after we do all of that? There are people who is, you're probably sitting right now home in your bed line and you're comfortable under your sheet or in your, in your couch, wherever you are. And you're saying, this is comfortable. Truth be told, some of us didn't want to get up to come here this morning. Let's be honest, right? They're comfortable. And they're probably saying, well, COVID have taught me that I don't really need to be in church. <laughs> what do you say? Is the church building, is, has this become irrelevant? As our gathering here, has it become irrelevant? What, what do we do going forward? And I want us to address that. Uh, and I'm going to say my piece as you think about this. I was discussing this with a friend um, yesterday who's also a pastor. And as we were talking, we said, the church, 
there is something about church that brings growth, right? It said when we're in our little caboose at home, then that's grace become greed. And I said, wow. So you, you, you're telling me that I really need to be with church folks? And she said, well, you be patient with your family. But what happens when someone step on your car in a church? When someone said that word that really dis disturbed you and you don't want to go back, isn't that the place where you really learn to love the unlovable? Isn't that the place where you learn the patience? So is it... Is all that necessary now? Is it irrelevant? What do we do going forward? I saw Pastor Lincoln. I just wanted to share this. I'm just going back to basically what Pastor Francis, Pastor Ben once said earlier. For me and my church, the Ebenezer Church, we've learned through this pandemic to refocus because for some reason we've always believed that the church is the building and if we don't show up in the building then we've lost everything this pan pandemic has taught us that the church is the people and even though we are not in the building at the beginning of the pandemic we had church granted yes personally I missed the fellowship and everything. But personally for me, I was down and out for two months, April and May. I was just down, lost one of the best person in my life, my mother, pandemic, the coronavirus. But something hit us at Ebenezer. We, had, we have a very active pantry. We feed over 200 people on a given Wednesday. And the question was asked, should we cancel? And in my frail moment, my broken moment, I reached out to them. I said, never. This will not stop. You would be amazed to see how many people show up on Wednesdays. You would be amazed to see how many of our brethren show up to serve the community. And in that community, praise God. We have people worshiping with us today from the pantry. Can you imagine we had gotten panic, oh, we are not going to do this. What would be our testimony today? And during the week, the membership decided, listen, pastor, yes, we're coming. Some of them started giving hot chocolate and all stuff on Sabbath morning. And I'm thinking, God, I hope they'll be safe out there. But not one person have said to us, we got the virus or anything. So I am saying to us, for me personally, and I believe my congregation, we have learned to refocus how we do things. Because many a times we believe we have to do it this way, and if it's not done this way, then the church is gonna fall apart. I've never seen the church fall apart. And back to Pastor, thing, uh, Pastor Francis, because we've done it the, this way in 1970, it doesn't mean that we have to do it today in the 21st century. Our method has to change. And I know sometimes we're glued to the old-fashioned method and believe that if it's not done this way, then we're, everything is lost. No, we have not lost one thing. The church will always grow when we dig to get creative ideas and how to get this gospel out to the community. And remember, people of God, when God placed the church in the community, it's not just for the members. It's for the entire community that you are part of. Amen. And sometimes we're kind of selfish to believe that it's all about us. But it's about the people around us because God has placed us there to serve them. That's my thought. Thank you. There is Pastor Z, can you get the mic to him? Go ahead in the meanwhile. Yeah, I, I the think um, we don't know Pastor Z. Um, this, this COVID thing have taught me a lot. You know, I, I reached out, I started an online ministry, started a Zoom ministry, doing Bible study. But you know, the spirit of being, you know, I pray every day, I say, Lord, sometimes somebody might attack you. You say, How, what should I do? A few weeks ago, someone tagged me, and I 
started conversation, started conversation, make it short. The Spirit used me in such a way that today, this family of four went to church in Nigeria. Today, they sent pictures, today's Adventure's Day. They were sending pictures of me, this is Adventure's Day, and the, the family have kids. You know, and I said, this is an opportunity. The church is really as, about people teaching us to love people as Jesus loved people. Go ahead, Pastor Z, and then I'll... I, um, I, I don't think we addressed your question on the floor, Madam Chair. No, not yet. The, the question on the floor was, how do we get the Sabbath worship back to where it was? Um, and we have to encapsulate that. And I don't disagree with my brothers, uh, that, that my colleagues, that the pandemic has allowed us to get out of the walls the pandemic has allowed us to advance in technology. And I love what my sister said in the back, the pandemic has forced us as, as individuals to examine our discipline. And part of getting members back to the church is gonna have to be driven through these new methods for the realization that part of your discipline is worshiping together. Man. I mean, we, we and, and it, 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 it boggles my mind because uh, people are losing their minds to crowd into Barclays as often as they can. And people are losing their minds to pack City Field and to pack Yankee Stadium and to pack Madison Square Garden. And, and they're doing it out of a loyalty. There is an inherent loyalty because the Nets can be terrible and they will still get 5,000 plus people. The Knicks can be horrible and will still get 10,000 plus people. If they're good, they get 30. So what I'm saying is, is that yes, technology allows us to push this message forward, but we have to start preaching that the Bible says uh, it is good that you fellowship together. Amen. That's scripture. Amen. Let's not move away from scripture when we say, oh, come together because the music is lit. Come together because the prayer meeting is on fire. Come together because we saw this happen in people's lives. Yes, all those things are fantastic because the Holy Spirit moves when God's people move together. And when God's people move together is when they come together. So we have to, we have to push that. Paul said, forsake ye not the fellowship with one another. Amen. And when we push that part of our worship, part of our worship, the predominance of our worship, that's why, that's why, and I, I know I might be a little long, so I'm going to try and cut it off, but that's why I think so many of us got dissatisfied and get tired sitting on the couch and watching the, the, the sermon through your television, because at some point, even if you stay all the way awake, and I love that you're honest, Elder Roberts, because that's probably a lot of us experience that too, but is that, is that, you said, man, that was a good word, but I didn't celebrate the word. Amen. I, people of color, we can't celebrate the word sitting down. No. Some honesty in here, faith saints. We can't sell, just like you can't celebrate your basketball game sitting down, you're not celebrating God's word when it's good sitting down. So we have to push that family, that, that coming back to this house, or the house on New Haven, 634 Prospect Place. Thank you, Elder Campbell. I had to squeeze that in. <laughs> Whether you come to Brooklyn SDA or Dunamis or Ebenezer yeah, yeah. or New Haven, we have to express that realizing you're going to experience God different. Yes, we're going to have it online. We're going to have it online because we know the world we're living in. And, and, and my audio video team tells me that most of the views we get is not on Sabbath. We get views all through the week. Amen. So we're going to have it online. But to really experience worship with God, be in the house of God with God's people. I, I want to, I, Thank you. I, Thank want you. To, I, want to, I want to expand on that somewhat. And um, I've always been a believer in not thinking either or. It's not an either or situation that we are called to embrace. We are called to embrace flexibility. Uh, because we've preached as seven Adventists that there's coming a day when we will have to go out and we can't come together in the buildings. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 is a preparatory um, thing for that. Amen. We must get to the place 
where we embrace God for ourselves, where we can celebrate. I've learned, and Pastor Benoit and, and the preachers in here, I've learned to preach that sermon to an empty building and celebrate that word by myself and say amen if there's nobody to say amen. Because this is teaching us not only that we are disciples, but that our focus is not to eat the word just that, but to get the word to the people. And I have even gotten to the place where I'm thinking about virtual membership. Wherever the people are, some people will never get building, but they will get the word online, and we must embrace this online situation. I have uh, been asking my church at Dunamis to and because, because, you know, that, that gives, as you said, Pastor Z, a certain level of uh, support. But I do not want us to think that we have to think in either or. Let's embrace it to reality and let's work for God. Uh, oh, you, go ahead, please. Uh, okay, I, I just want to give two quick things. One is kind of a testimony. Um, right after COVID or while COVID was still going on, but when we first came back into the building, we had, I believe it was an AY, and we talked about, it was basically this, but how COVID was on a very personal level for all of us, how it affected us uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. And I gave a testimony saying that before COVID, with my ministry, I sing. And I do other things around the church, but I sing. That's the main thing. It's music ministry. And before COVID, I said, sometimes when I came to church, I was, I didn't feel ashamed, but I felt it was a chore. I felt like coming to church, it didn't feel good being in person sometimes and saying, you know, I'm nervous and stuff like that. And then COVID happened. And what I realized was that when COVID happened, I'm at home and I'm still singing. I have videos out there of me singing with my sister and our praise team came together and we did videos over there, music videos and all this. And we're singing, we're still ministering. It didn't feel the same at all. I'm like... I'm not in the building. I'm, I, listen, I'm at, I'm at home, and I'm like, I want to go back to church. I'm in, I'm in the house all day, all day, and then Sabbath? <laughs> listen, I've been raised to come to church every day, or every Sabbath day, I'm sorry. That's how I've been raised. So staying at home was, let's be honest, it was hell, for me at least. And singing wasn't any better. When I came back and I gave my testimony, I said, every time I come back now, since I've been through that COVID experience, I have a joy to sing. I have a joy, you know, I have a joy to be in person and, um, and give that testimony and give that ministry. And one more quick thing, in our church here, we've had a thing of trying to keep members in, and I guess this is more to your question about how we keep members in and then going out. What we've talked about here, and I don't, I can't remember the specific situation, but it was with the youth and with some other uh, ministries in the church, and we talked about how there are people in the church that come in, some with youth, some by themselves, and they'll come for two, three months, and then they leave. And then we don't know where they've gone. And then we've had some of our members talk with them, catch up with them, like, oh, why'd you stop coming? And they say, oh, well, we weren't given much to do. We're just sitting here, coming here every day, listening to the sermon, and that's great and all, but we haven't been given much to do. Sometimes people don't even say hi to me. That's what they're saying. And this is why I was trying to, and everything I'm saying now is going to echo off of what everyone else has said. This is a people business. It's a people ministry. To even say hi. Some of these people are just saying, all right, you can't say hi to me. I'll go somewhere else or I'll stay home. It's that deep. It's that deep. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. oh, yeah, just, just one more thing. To encourage anyone else, what we've tried to do here is, even if you haven't been in the church very long, we try to encourage you to work with us to work in any ministry, like we have some people in communications and music, we try to implement them even though they haven't been here for long. And I encourage you to do so at your church. Thank you. Amen. Go ahead, I'll take yeah. you and then yeah, brother, we're gonna have to wrap CJ, up after. I, I, I love what you said, brother, for real. What's, um, I was thankful for the pandemic uh, for several reasons. One being like, as people that serve in the church, I think that like, sometimes we're exhausted, right? The youth especially, they're on cameras. They're singing, they're doing AY, and they were squeezed, squeezed, squeezed. And then what ends up happening, the pandemic came, and we got a break. We got a break. And I thought, and, and sometimes we, we, like you said, it becomes a chore, it becomes a job to serve God, and then you lose almost the passion because every time you're being pulled. One thing the pandemic taught me was, I'm a teacher myself, that depression rates and suicidal rates gone up. 
tremendously. And some of our youth struggle with that as well too. The pandemic taught me that the Adventist church, the message about outreach is so beautiful, but there's not a focus on inreach. In this conversation here, same thing is happening. It's about, oh, the people outside, people outside. There are people here that haven't been here for years. Where are they? And the problem is, right, unfortunately, you're right. There's people that don't even say hi to you here, right? The, the church looks this way, not because of outside, because of inside. So what is it that we are doing, right, that we can't even retain the membership that we have here, right? And it makes me think about if the church was more intimate, more connected, right, that we saw each other during the week and not just to dress up and look good when we come here, right, what, what would it look like? The church has been here for so long, but the church is empty. And, you, and I love what he said there. The church isn't for the members, for the community, right? So how do we have a system in place to address things like mental health, right? To address financial situation and address love because it's a lack of intimacy. And I wonder what could we do not only focus on the outside, but also on the inside as well too. Amen, amen. amen. Uh, unfortunately, I could only take the last one um, and then close them up here. I, I just want to piggyback on what Mark just said. One of the things that really hurt me, folks, um, or at least opened my eyes when COVID hit, uh, and I got quite a few phone calls from my members who complained about that. Those are folks who are here every single Sabbath. They, they don't skip a Sabbath. But when COVID happened, they realized how lonely they were. In other words, the, the, the relationships were superficial. Hi, sister so-and-so. Hi, brother so-and-so. But it's only here. And I think what I heard Mark said is when they go home, there's no more interaction happening among themselves. And so when COVID happened, they were literally home alone. And, and, and if the pastor or the elders were not making the phone calls, nobody's calling. And the, the pastor did not make the phone calls. Are you still with me? And so you had a lot of folks who for months at a time, there was no interaction between them and anybody from the church. And so when church had to reopen, the question is, do I wanna come back? The relationships that I had fooled myself into believing existed, they did not exist. And so I wanna say this, the, the whole concept of uh, 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 outreach is extremely important. So I just wanna piggyback on what you said, just to put some emphasis on it. But if we don't, and I think I heard um, uh, 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 Elder Roberts mention, if we don't really love each other in here, so that I'm talking about genuine love, so people know that I'm cared for by the people around me, that stuff is contagious. People outside will know, and they will want to be here because there's something in here that they will not be able to find anywhere. Unfortunately, that's not always the case. Thank All you. Right. I wish we had more time, don't amen, you? Amen. I wish we had more time, but unfortunately. But before we go, Pastor Samuel, <laughs> let me say one thing. This thing is really, one I thing, stick it to thing. my thing. It's about teaching people to love people as Jesus loved people. This is why this building exists. I had this man coming. We had a bread ministry. Give me the simple example. This man was coming to for bread ministry. And every time he come to bed ministry, our ministry was designed when we, we feed the people, we invite them to Bible study. I have invited this man for Bible study for two years. And every time this man come, this man want a cinnamon, a cinnamon bread. He wants a cinnamon bread. And if he doesn't get a cinnamon, cinnamon bread, he's not leaving. So you'll get other bread and he will stay in another corner. And that's the thing. You, I, I, two years I inviting you, coming and every time you'll say, I ain't giving you no cinnamon bread. No cinnamon bread for you. I say that in my mind. But listen to all the fellowship important that we come together. The, the brother next to me come and say, give the man the cinnamon bread. Give the man the cinnamon bread. <laughs> so okay, I give him reluctantly, I give him the cinnamon bread. So after he, he keep coming, I keep giving, you know the spirit tell me, this is not about people coming in your Bible study. This is about teaching you to love people. Amen? Amen. And the man keep coming. And when I started to give the man with love, even though the man didn't come, eventually one day, I called the man, and the man, he, you know, he came once to the Bible study, and he said to me, Ella, I never knew this thing was so. They make it sure the man baptized. Praise amen? God. Amen? <laughs> so it's really about loving people within and without. Amen, amen, amen. To wrap this up, to wrap this up, what I'm hearing is that it's not one way, it's two way. In reach, outreach. 
Let's love each other. God told us people outside will know that we are his disciples when we have love for each other. We have to love each other. What if, what if, what if God allowed COVID? What, I didn't say he caused it. What if he allowed it for us to see that we are not as spiritual, yes. we are not as loving, mm -hmm. we are not as kind, yes. Amen. our ministry is superficial. Yes. What if yes. it is to ex ex expose us mm -hmm. as Seventh-day Adventist Christians? Amen. Amen. What if mm -hmm. COVID was to make us Christians? Amen. Think about that. May God continue to bless you as we make a New York City a symbol for the work that is supposed to happen around the world. Amen. Blessing. I want to thank you. each of you. All those who participate, those online, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Sister Campbell, I'm going to ask you to come and pray for us, please. Can you give Sister Campbell a mic, please? Thank you. I'm going to ask you to stand, please. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for bringing us here this morning. Thank you for watching over us during the week, protecting us from danger, and bringing us to worship you today. Lord, thank you for the discussion. Thank you for opening before us the task that you have given us in reach and outreach. And in fact, dear Jesus, you said that people would know we are your disciples by the love we show. So please teach us how to love and teach us how to reach individuals in these last days. And we pray that as we worship today and as your Holy Spirit prompts us to follow your direction and when you ask the question, whom shall I send and who will go for us? May each of us individually say, here am I, send me. So please be with us as we worship you. Please grant us your blessing, forgive us of our sins, and open our minds, giving us wisdom and insight as to how we can reach your people everywhere. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please be seated and stay tuned. If you're online, stay tuned for an inspiring worship service. God bless you. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I just have a short announcement. We have in our Pathfinder Adventure Camp is coming up. And um, Pathfinder Camp is from June 3rd to the 5th. Adventure is from June 12, 10th to the 12th. So we're asking all church members to donate um, what you can. Um, Director Johnson and Director Clark and Councillor Cox and um, myself and also Councillor Dacia will be coming around asking for donations.
for camp, for adventures. Um, please continue to pray for uh, one of our uh, member, um, Brother Robert, who recently lost his eldest brother in Jamaica. So let's continue to pray for him. If you have an announcement, please don't give it on the Sabbath. You could text me during the week, or you can email me or text one of the clerk who's on duty. Please continue to pray for a sick and shut in and those who are not able to come out for regardless whether they're, um, they're sick or there might be other issues going on. Also, the baby's room is to my extreme right. That would be to your, um, actually it's to my left. That would be to your right in the back. The male bathroom is on the third floor. Soon as you get up to the third floor landing and the foyer, make a sharp right. And the ladies' room is straight ahead, and you make a right. And a takeaway for today. It says, you know what? It's very hard to forgive um, whoever have done you wrong. But continue to pray to God to help us to forgive what others have done to us. Have a blessed Sabbath. One, two. Okay, we are. Um, let us take our hymnals and tune to hymn number 626. Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way. In a little while, we're going home. And I will be coming down to see if you guys are singing. Here we go. Let us sing a song that will cheer us by the way. In a little while we're going home. And the night will end in the everlasting day. In a little while we're going home. In a little while. strength renew in a little while we're going home in a little while in a little while we shall cross the billows road we shall meet at last when the stormy In a little while we're going home And no tears shall fall In that city bright and fair In a little while we're going home In a little while In a little while We shall cross the billows road We shall meet
right, number 633. That is everybody's favorite song. Well, so I think you guys are going to sing. Sing the one just love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Number 633, here we go. So everybody in the audience is going to sing now. Ready? After three, two, three, here we go. Then be true and faithful. Trusting, Trust serving, serving every, every day. day. Come on, you can do much better. Just one glimpse of him in glory. Will the toils of life repay? I heard the pastor see. Here we go. When we all get what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us. Soon this beauty will be home. streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all One quick announcement, if you are a member of the officiating party, we're asking that you assemble outside. We are about to start the service. If you are a member of the officiating um, party, we ask that you meet the others outside. Okay, we're gonna sing number 422, Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in the song with sweet accord and dust around the throne. Number 422. Come we that of the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord and thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne we're marching to Zion 
Congregation, please stand. Good morning, everybody. Oh, let's try that again. Good morning, people of God. I don't know for you, but uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. What do you say? Uh, this is indeed the day that the Lord has made. Uh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. I am just so happy to be here with you in the house of the Lord. Uh, I don't know if you can tell from where I'm standing, but I see faces that uh, I have not seen for a while. I see people that I don't recognize at all, but all together you form this beautiful bouquet. And I'm sure that the heaven is indeed rejoicing. You know, I'm thinking of uh, something that uh, a friend of my father, a colleague of my dad, I was a child then, uh, I used to say, I, I, we used to go to his house sometimes when uh, he had special events. And, and he would say something that sounded like this. He would say, oh... He says, he says, please feel welcome, welcome. Please make yourself comfortable. He says, act as though you were in your house, but don't forget you're in my house. 
And so I want to say something very similar to you today. Uh, my dear beloved, please, please, please uh, make yourself comfortable. Act as though you were in your house. But don't forget, you are in God's house. And because you are in God's house, here's something that I know for a fact, uh, and, and, and I have no doubts about it. Because you are here in his house, uh, there is a special blessing that you will receive today that you could not have gotten anywhere else. Do I have an amen from somebody? And so I just want to thank God for that. Uh, uh, speaking of house, I just want to let you know that uh, uh, it is a joy for us at uh, the Brooklyn Seventh Adventist Church uh, to have all of you be here in person or uh, watching online. It is such a, an honor for us to host this special event. For those of you who are in the house, just want to make sure that you have your bearings about you. You are now on the second floor, and if you had to take a flight of stairs uh, and uh, you are not up happy about it, uh, we meant to do that. We wanted you to get your exercise. Amen, somebody. All right, uh, you are on the second floor. Our restrooms are on the third floor. We are insisting on you getting your exercise. Uh, let me be honest with you. We, we do not have right now a functioning elevator. It keeps breaking down on us. Uh, we are thinking we are actually in the process of raising funds. Yeah. Uh, to replace this elevator, and we're hoping to do that very soon. So uh, if you feel compelled, impressed, uh, to give a little donation towards the elevator fund, uh, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit of God uh, speak with you, uh, but I'm openly soliciting. I have no shame. Uh, just uh, be good to us, and I'm sure the Lord has a very special blessing on you. And again, thank you so much for being here. I'm now going to cede the rest of my time to the distinguished gentleman from the Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist Church, Pastor Lincoln Smith. Happy Sabbath, everyone. You could do better than that. Happy Sabbath, everybody. This is indeed the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in him. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, you could do better than that. Say hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. If God is worthy to be praised, just put your hands together and give God some praise in the house of the Lord today. I am so glad to be here with you. I want to say thanks. To my friend, my colleague, Dr. Benoit, your pastor, it's a joy today to be together. Somebody say amen. amen. As you know, our theme for this year is I will go. And in this room today, we have a few churches meeting together. Yes, it's pandemic time, but we will still praise God. It's pandemic time. We will still win souls for his kingdom. So in this room today, we give God praise. Although, although we might be diverse in culture, yet in Christ we are one. Somebody say amen. We believe that there is one true God. Do you believe? We have one mission, and that is to win souls for his kingdom. And, and, and we are about doing that every day. We have one gospel. Therefore, we look and we collaborate together to spread this everlasting gospel. Somebody say amen. I know that God is doing a mighty thing through his churches. Somebody say amen. Last week, we've just concluded our series with, uh, with Pastor Williams. And praise God. Somebody, I'm going to give God praise for three precious souls. Somebody say amen. So we are on the battlefield for the Lord. And we solicit your prayers. People of God, we have come today. And the churches that are in the room, I'm going to ask if you are here with us, just stand to your feet. Brooklyn SDA Church, if you are here, just, just wave your hand and give God some praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We have the New Haven Church, represented by Pastor Desta Zablotny in Brooklyn, as you know, Pastor Benoit. Then we have the Maranatha Church. Yes, Maranatha Church. Pastor Mundale at Manro Rother, he was here with us, and Pastor Everett Samuels. And we give God praise. Pastor Everett Samuels will be taking up her, her pastorship on her home very soon. So we give God praise. Today is her last day at Maranatha. So that's why you're not seeing them. But we give God praise, and we say congratulations to her. We have the Beulah SD Church. Do we have Beulah in the house today? Praise God. We have Pastor Adrian Case. We see Beulah at the back. We give God praise. 
Then we have the Berean and the Eden church. Berean, if you're in the house, just wave your hands and give God some praise. Amen. And then, then we have with us, yours truly, the Ebenezer Seventh-day Adventist church. Ebenezer, if, if you're in the house, we are going to just wave your hand. Praise God. I see them in the house. Then we have my good friend from the Dunamis all over there. Dunamis, the Dunamite church. We have representatives. If you have Dunamis in the house, just wave. Hey, praise God. We are seeing you in the house today. And that, he, the, the, the good friend of mine, Pastor Donald Francis. Pastor, just wave to the, the brethren here for me, please. We give God praise for his ministry. People of God, we are about the mission of the church. Amen. Someone said to me the other day, Pastor, do we still give out tracts? I said, we never stop doing that. Do we still, we stop feeding the folk? We never stop doing that because our church is not just a building. Our church are the people and we are a part of the community. The other day, I took the uh, opportunity to go outside among 200 of our community members. And I'm telling you, people of God, it's to know that we could mingle with the people in midday. We could pray with them. We could encourage them in the Lord. And that's why we exist. Somebody say amen. So we, we want to give God praise. I want to give God praise for you, all the eight churches here in Brooklyn. And guess what, people of God? We need two more churches. Oh, boy. We are about church planting. And guess what? I know you're looking and you're saying, what? But if we are serious about the mission, we will always endeavor to plant a new church in Brooklyn. Somebody say amen. So we give God praise. We, we want to, I'm, I'm really, really serious about this. So we want to encourage you to start praying and start working on this because we are about soul winning. Now, I want to share with you our president, Dr. Henry Barris. He said to me, Pastor, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to give the brethren these little tokens. Amen. So all the churches, just raise your hands. Brooklyn, 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 amen. New Haven. All right. So I'm going to ask the ushers, Deacon, could you help me out, please? This is on, on behalf of the, the, our great president, Dr. Henry Barris. He has some goodies for you. So I'm going to ask you, um, ushers, you, could you help me out? I don't know how we're going to share, but I'm going to do the honor by giving the lead pastor in this church. Pastor Benoit, could you come? Because I'm in his house, so i got to take care of him first. Somebody say amen. So this is for you, sir. And, 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 and I have to take care of the, the speaker. Could you get the box for me, please? Um, he, 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 I have to be very good to him. Dr. Jones, this is yours, and I have one for your lovely wife. So just bring them back. So we're going to make sure every church, every church in this room is taken care of. No, I, I'm not saying I have everything for you, but we're going to try our best. Now, I know, do, how many elders do we have in the room today from our churches? How many elders? Come on, stand, stand elders. You stand with me, please. So, I'm going to ask Brooklyn Church to stand first. Elder, I'm going to give you one, a little light. Thank you. This is from our president, and I want to make sure I follow his directive. Somebody say amen. I'm being obedient to my president. Now, elders, we have some powerful books for you. One edited by one of our former leader, The Gift, and the other is from our own pastor Robert Charles and this is chosen to be a disciple so I'm going to ask Brooklyn could you take your Brooklyn for me on this side uh, New Haven will you stand for me please I want to make sure all are taken so just stand we're going to go by churches stand quickly New Haven just give each member one for me please Thank you, thank you. Could you stand? Just give, the, give, the, just, just give them out for me, please. Just, just give them out for me right now. Yes. 
So everyone, God's willing, hopefully you get one for yourself. All right. At this time, I, I pray that they are ready. We have greetings on behalf of our Executive Secretary, Dr. Alonzo Smith, and our English Ministries Director, Pastor Bancroft Dahmer. Uh, if you're ready, we will just go ahead while they're giving out these tokens. This time we are going to bring greetings on behalf of Dr. Alonzo Smith, our Executive Secretary, then we'll follow by Pastor Matt. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all. It is a pleasure to greet you on behalf of the English Ministries Department as you celebrate your Brooklyn Regional Convention. My regret is that I'm not there with you in person, but my spirit joins with yours as together we celebrate this special event. We are delighted that you have accepted the challenge to work collaboratively with each other for growth and support and for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God. I want to applaud each pastor, each church, each leader, each member for embracing the philosophy that we can achieve so much more together than we can individually. I must express our gratitude to the leadership and its team for putting this program together. May we continue to work harmoniously to the honor and glory of God and for the growth of each other. Let me pause just to recognize and acknowledge your guest speaker, Dr. Clifford Jones and his wife. I pray that God's anointing will be upon you as you present his word today. I wish for each one an awesome and inspiring Sabbath as we worship and fellowship together and may God bless you abundantly. Abundantly. Will you put your hands together for our leader, Pastor Bancroft Dahmer? At this time, we're going to invite Mr. Islop, the principal of this great school, Brooklyn SDS School. You put your hands together for Mr. Islop. Mr. Islop. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I trust that we are having a wonderful day today. I stand here on behalf of the Brooklyn Seventh-day Adventist School to bring you greetings 
uh, the Brooklyn School is still standing. Uh, we are still here. We are still meeting the needs of the community. And we want to extend our arms to meet the needs of all the churches in the Brooklyn area. A major part of the mission, you know, we talk about the mission of the church, the gospel and planting churches and so forth. A major part of that mission is also Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. And not just Christian education. Seventh-day Adventist Christian education. Christian education is still relevant today as we prepare students for this world, but more importantly for the world to come. We believe that every child needs to be prepared for service in this world and the world to come. And how do we do that? Through our Seventh-day Adventist uh, Christian education. Just want to bring you a few highlights of the Brooklyn Seventh-day Adventist School. Uh, students continue to score well on their state ELA math and science exams. The school has chartered a chapter of the National Junior Honor Society. We administer the NWEA MAP growth exams, and what this does, it provides us with data so that teachers can see what students know, what they don't know, and use that data to inform instruction. We are continuing our pre-K and kindergarten programs, which we started in um, September of 1998. Um, discounts are all available, also available for those who qualify. So you might have two children, three children, you're entitled to some discounts. We have free <laughs> breakfast and lunch. So we, we've partnered with the, with the city, and you get free breakfast and lunch every day. Students get that. Uh, Brooklyn Seventh-day Adventist has received the Excellence Award from Greater New York Conference Office of Education in the past, and we recently dedicated our multimedia um, center. And if you were to take one of the gleaners, the May Gleaner, there is actually an article in there under the Greater New York Conference that deals with the opening of that media center. Now, one of the things we look forward to next year is opening a space. Right now, that area doubles for both media. It's both a media center, and we also have our music program. But what we intend to do is to dedicate a separate space for the music so that the media center can fulfill the goals for which it was established. So we just want to challenge our churches to support our existing students. We also want to challenge our churches to sponsor students to our schools. There might be students who want to come to a Seventh-day Adventist school, but because of financial constraints, may not be able to. We're asking our churches to reach out to their communities, reach out to their children, for we know that when we educate our children at a very young age, they will remain in the truth. So we want to encourage our churches to do that. It does not take, it, there's a proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes money. So if God has blessed you with means, and there is a child in your church, or a parent that is struggling to send that child to a Seventh-day Adventist Christian school, and you're able to support, then do so. We have a table at the back that has, we have a few promotional items and application forms. We encourage you to take some of those forms back to your churches. We have the regular application form for the school year, and then there is also an application form for our summer program and summer camp. You can take some of those back to your churches. And feel free to make copies. There is no copyright. You can make copies of those, and you can have... Um, children come and register for our school. So as I end, remember the Bible tells us to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So please support your school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Islop. Thank you so much. And parents, 
I am an advocate of Adventist Christian education. When I got to Ebenezer, we had no students attending this school. Today, we have up to four, and we are trying our best to get others to attend this school. We are pro-Adventist Christian education, and I'm encouraging you to support this great school, the Brooklyn SDA School. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Islam. I believe the video is ready for Dr. Alonzo Smith, our executive secretary. A special word of commendation to all you pastors of the Brooklyn Circuit of Churches, and especially to Pastor Lincoln Smith, who is the air coordinator for Brooklyn. You're having your convention today under the theme, I Will Go. And how apropos is that theme? As a matter of fact, the theme for the Greater New York Conference is, I Will Go, Send Me. You know when God wanted to send someone to stand in the gap, he asked the question, whom shall I send and who will go? And the prophet Isaiah answered, hear my Lord, send me. In other words, hear my Lord, I will go. These are some difficult days in which we're living in. We see the economic challenges. Uh, we see what's going on over in Ukraine. And all these developments, my brothers and sisters, are telling us one thing. The coming of the Lord is near. And God wants laborers in his vineyard, people who are willing, people who are dedicated and committed to go, to respond to the call, hear my Lord, I will go, and help to lead men and women, boys and girls, to the foot of the cross. As you come together, united as one under the banner of Prince Emmanuel. I pray a special blessing upon this, your, your, your convention. And I ask that God's blessings will be upon you and your work. Our pastors, you have been so hardworking and we thank you. Our elders and uh, officers, you have been hardworking, especially during this pandemic. We thank you. And so on behalf of the Greater New York Conference, our president, Dr. Henry Beres, our treasurer, Isaiah Javier, and myself, I just want to thank you all and say congratulations and uh, respond to the call. I will go. God bless you all. I will go. God bless you all. Thank you. That's our executive secretary, Dr. Lanza Smith. Brothers and sisters, Let's continue to worship our God and our maker in spirit and in truth. I, I believe Pastor Crew is in the house, the pastor of Marian, St. Evanese Church and Eden Church. We are glad to have you. God bless you, everybody. God bless you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning, happy Sabbath. On behalf of the English Ministries Brooklyn area pastors and churches of the Greater New York Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, I take this opportunity to welcome you to an exciting English Ministries convention today. And I know that God through Pastor Clifford Jones will remind us of the benefits of being obedient and saying, I will go. So if you're worshiping with us on Zoom, Facebook, YouTube, or in the sanctuary, we welcome you. If you're a member of any Seventh-day Adventist church in Brooklyn, we welcome you. If you're old, you're young, you're in between, or you're a teenager, we welcome you. If you can sing like Pastor Lincoln Smith, or like me who can't carry a note in a bucket, we welcome you. You know why I will go? I will go because the forecast for today and the days ahead, it is so exciting. It is God rains and the sun, S-O-N shines. 
And you know what? You need no SPF when you are basking in the rays of the sun. Not only will you get vitamin D, but you will get vitamins S A L V A T I O N from the sun. And oh, by the way, if you're feeling warm, please note that this church is prayer condition. We will turn the prayer thermostat up, but we'll never turn it down, neither will we turn it off. I will also like you to know that dust on our Bibles will lead to dirt in our lives. Dirt in our lives will lead to hell, and hell is really uncool, and it has no AC. And as we welcome you here today, we want to inform you that swallowing your pride seldom leads to indigestion. So swallow, let go, and declare, I will go. You know, I will go, because I know God gave his strongest, his deepest battle to his strongest um, soldiers. I will go, because in life you can have excuses or you can have results. So it's either you pray or you worry, but don't do both. I will go anywhere as long as it is forward, because it is only those who risk going too far will know how far they can go. I will go because I realize that it doesn't matter how slow I go as long as I don't stop. And I will go and encourage others to try Jesus. And if they don't like him, there's no problem because the devil will gladly take them back. Yes, I will go and I will tell the world that every day with Jesus, is sweeter than the day before. So I will say, Lord, I trust you with all my heart. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. Even if, not, even if it's not where I planned, lead me and I will follow. I will go. And I invite you to join the family of God. He doesn't require that you dress up to approach him or turn over a new leaf to impress him. You can come just as you are. Friends, this is the most important invitation you will ever receive. What will your RSVP be? Again, I say welcome to God's house. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome. Smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, everybody smile, won't you greet somebody in Jesus' name, won't you tell them that you love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Everybody smile. Jesus loves you. Smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Everybody smile. Smile. you love them in Jesus name tell them we can work together in Jesus name everybody smile Jesus loves you everybody smile Jesus loves won't you greet somebody in Jesus name won't you tell them that you love them in Jesus name tell them we Jesus loves you, everybody smile. 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 Jesus loves you.
or call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 63, the verses 1 through 5, the 63rd division of the psalm. O God, you are our God. Earnestly we seek you today. Our souls thirst for you. Our whole being longs for you. Because we have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory, we can respond. Lord, your love is better than life itself. And we declare that our lips will glorify you. We will praise you as long as we live. And in your name, we will lift up our hands and our hearts to do your work. Lord, we will be satisfied if you feed us. And we will now sing praise to your name. The Lord has already blessed his word. And we trust that he'll accept our worship today. May the congregation please stand. your name in all the earth we're here today to praise to magnify and to glorify thy name we invoke your presence and your power in this house and yes Lord we'll be mindful to give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory for we ask it with thanksgiving and joy abundant in your name and for your sake amen One more minute to say this, so let me do it quickly. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Um, now is our praise and worship session. Is now time to praise the Lord through song. We've been doing it throughout the whole morning, singing hymns. But now we have a nice, fun medley for you guys today. Songs that we all know. I, I would hope you guys know. This is the day that the Lord has made. You all, you all know that, right? You all know the song, right? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I know I heard one of the pastors say it this morning, so I, I, I'm positive y'all know it. It's a fun medley. It's going to be amazing. If you guys can, we invite you to stand. You know, we want to move around. We want to get the energy flowing. So please stand if you can. Y'all don't want to praise God this morning. If you can't, please stand. Come on. Six days of toil and labor. Come on, guys. We're going to praise God. We're going to make one big old happy choir. It's going to be amazing. Amen. This is the 
this is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. For he has made me glad. He has made me. He has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. This is this is the day. This is the day that the Lord. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I 
will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, glad in it. This is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is Please remain standing for the opening hymn and it's Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart and it's number 27 in our hymnals. Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Praise the Lord. How many of you know that prayer is powerful? Do I have a witness in the house that knows that prayer is powerful? And today we are going to approach the king of the universe. This house 
is filled with his presence. I do not know if you recognize that God is in here to bless and to do us good. In fact, brothers and sisters, as you stand and remain standing, I want for you to stretch your hands forward, expectant that God is about to do something marvelous in your life. Furthermore, if you have any request, any burden, any challenge that you face, I want for you this moment as I pray and as we sing to prepare for this prayer to speak to your God or your Lord understands the issues of the heart. us have come into this place challenged by life's vicissitudes. This week has made our lives tohu and bohu, formless and empty. Beaten by the challenges in our workplaces, challenged by the family situations that we've had to grapple with, hard pressed by financial challenges encumbered by emotional disturbances but we've entered into this place of sweet repose near to the heart of God a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God and this Sabbath promises God since you are the ultimate Sabbath, you promise us that if we are weary, we must come and receive rest. It is this rest that we've come seeking today. And we ask that as we open our hands to you and our hearts, that you'll fill us with the spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, fill us now until we want no more. Fill us until the overflow. And since he who comes as the comforter, the Holy Ghost, brings all other gifts in his train, may you therefore bring healing to our bodies. There are those, God, who are suffering from different forms of diseases and sicknesses. And they've come into this place asking if just a word will be spoken by Almighty God so that sickness will flee. They've come, God, seeking that even to touch the hem of your garment. We ask that you will indeed today rescue your people from sickness. And Holy Ghost, since in you we have restoration and financial stability, you promised that you will supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And since we are your children we ask that you'll bequeath to us, God, what is necessary for our daily sustenance. Today, God, we pray that somebody, having left this place today, 
will check that bank account and realize that you have deposited something therein, that somebody's mortgage will be catered to, that somebody's children, school fees, and school fees in general will be cared for. Father, the days in which we have come to live bring many emotional and psychological challenges. Somebody watching online, I feel in my spirit, and even in this house, came here having cried all week, wet their pillows, dangle their feet into eternity and ask the bewildering question, where is God? But today, God, I pray that you'll show up in this place, show up in that living room, show up in that car, show up, God, in that place, in that kitchen, in this house, and show yourself strong. Answer the unspoken requests of your children. And may they know that there is no God like our God. For you can hear what we have not spoken. And Father, I pray that you'll roll back the curtains of darkness. And allow the light of your grace appear through in our lives. And fill our lives with your light again. So that we'll be able to sing joy and praise to your name. And Father, since this is convention, and since we've come to hear from you, we pray today in the name of Jesus that we'll forget about ourselves, concentrate on you, that you will pour in, you, in us, God, your grace, your power, and your mercy. And I pray, Spirit of the living God, blow in this place in this moment, Cast out every foe. Break down every idol. Remove anything that will block the movement of your Holy Ghost. And we ask God they will sweep over our lives today. So that we will rise up to be an army great to finish this work. Father, from the foundation of the world, you have ordained this moment. This moment and you have equipped someone. Clifford Jones by name. With a word, I pray God that as he stands up, that the Holy Ghost will take full possession. I pray that his words will be accompanied by signs and wonders. And I pray that healing and miracle will accompany the message of the word today. I pray that the world will be sharp to cut asunder and evil principalities will be subdued to the word of God. And I pray today, Heavenly Father, that every pastor will rise up to be a powerful agent of change in his church, her church. Every member will say, here am I, Lord, send me. May the wind carry a mighty voice that Jesus saves. And at the end, ah, when the work is done, uh -huh, and the sheaves are gathered in, may we come rejoicing knowing that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And may we find part in your kingdom. As we march into new Jerusalem. Just like John. We await you now to speak to us and to feed us. In Jesus name.
be seated. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Happy Sabbath, everybody. God is indeed good and worthy to be praised. You know, I've been coming to Brooklyn for a while now, and every single time I come, they ask me to do a particular song. So as soon as I mounted the steps to get in the sanctuary, I was surrounded by the brethren asking me to do this song. And I'm going to do it. not a dream. She, God, will make all things new. That day gone is the curse on which I stumbled and fell. Evil will vanish to return. When God comes, we have no more nights, no more pain, and no more tears. I'll never cry again, but we'll sing praises to hallelujah. The great I I'll 
a book. I wish I had a church with me, but one day I'll take praises, praises to the great I am, and we will live, we will live in the light, hallelujah, of the risen, the risen Lamb. Let me hear the church say amen again. Amen. amen. Uh, it was last night my son decided to lead out in worship. He said he wanted to modernize worship. For some reason he says that his parents are too traditional. But while doing worship I realized that he actually had the outline that we usually use at Beulah. So he didn't, he didn't make any changes. And I heard him say it's offering time. I said, son, we don't have any money right now. We'll return online. And he was adamant that he needed to collect the offering. It was at that point I had to share with him. I remembered the story I've learned a while back. Uh, it was a day like this where this little boy was sitting in church. It was offering time. The deacons were going around. The little boy beckoned to the deacon and said, sir, could you put the offering container on the floor? And the deacon said to him, no. But the little boy kept beckoning to the deacon, please put the offering container on the floor. And because he was persistent, the, uh, he obeyed, the deacon obeyed, placed it on the floor. The little boy got up, stood in the container, looked at the deacon and said, sir, I don't have any money, so I want to give God my heart. So as you return today, as you return today, don't only give off your finances, but also give God your heart. I'll ask the deacons and ushers to stand in their respective places as we get ready to collect the offering. All right, let's pray as they get ready. Loving Lord, we're so thankful for this opportunity that uh, you have granted to us to return to you. You have blessed us. You have been good to us. So we ask that you'll continue to pour down your blessings that won't have room enough to receive. Uh, may the funds go forward to advance your work. But as we give, May we also give up our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. chapter, uh, Jonah chapter 1, I'll be reading for you verses 1 to 3, it should be coming up on your screen, I have the NKG, if it reads, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the son of Amittai, saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. 
But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. Let's say that one more time. He paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. This is the word of God. You may be seated. We apologize just before Pastor Lincoln comes in to introduce our speaker. Uh, there was a little bit of confusion with the offering. Uh, what we will do is at the end of the service, we're going to encourage you. There will be ushers at the back to collect the offering. Uh, there are multiple offerings being collected. If you are from one of your respective churches, uh, then we ask that uh, uh, you hold on to your tithe and offering so that you could return it to that specific church. If you have an offering that you would like to leave for the Brooklyn area um, a ministry team, then we ask that you would please identify that in a tithe envelope. Let us know that this is what the offering is for. But of course, if you want to leave a special offering for the Brooklyn Church, uh, you are free to do so as well. Uh, and Brooklyn members, you know how to also give online. The information is currently on your screen. God bless you all. If we have members from the Living Word, Seventh Adventist Church, if you're in the room, may I see your hands this morning? Praise God. The Living Words, Seventh Adventist Church. Senior pastor is Pastor Bancroft Donna. Amen. The privilege is mine today to introduce to you the speaker of the hour. Dr. R. Clifford Jones currently serves as Dean of the School of Theology at Oakwood University, a role he assumed on July 1st, 2021. After serving as president of the Lake Region Conference from 2014 to 2021. Before leading the Lake Region Conference, Dr. Jones was the Associate Dean of the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary. Prior to that, he served as chair of the Christian Ministry Department and as an associate professor and professor in that department. Because of his deep love for pastoral ministry, while teaching full-time at the seminary, Dr. Jones served as the senior pastor of the New Life Fellowship on the Andrews campus from 1997 to 2004. And as the senior pastor of the All Nations SDA Church in Bering Springs, Michigan from 2006 to 2014. Before joining the Andrews University faculty in 1995, Dr. Jones pastored in the Northeastern Conference of Seventh-day Adventists from 1975 to 1995, distinguishing himself in that field as a pastor evangelist who planted a church in Brooklyn, New York in 1983. He concluded his ministry in the Northeastern Conference by pastoring the two largest African-American congregations in New York City, the Hanson Place SDA Church in Brooklyn, New York, from 1987 to 1991, and the great Ephesus SDA Church in Harlem, New York, 1992 to 1995. From 1991 through 1995, 
Dr. Jones also served as an adjunct professor in the Doctor of Ministry program at the New York Theological Seminary. Although Dr. Jones received his undergraduate ministerial training at Atlantic Union College, he earned his baccalaureate degree from the Fitchburg State University. He graduated with a MA religion from Andrews University in 1979 and with a doctorate of ministry from the New York Theological Seminary in 1989. In 2001, he earned the Doctor of Philosophy, African American Religious Study in History from the Western Michigan University, a sought after presenter in the areas of African American studies, leadership development, and mission and ministry. Dr. Jones is the author of numerous professional and scholarly articles and has contributed chapters to several books. He has edited two books on preaching, preaching with power, and preaching with power, part two, and is the author of James K. Humphrey and the Sabbath, Seventh, Sabbath Day Seventh Adventists, an African American religious history text that examines the breakdown from the Adventist church of one of the most outstanding black pastors in Adventism in the early 20th century. Dr. R. Clifford Jones is married to the former Elva A. Williams, and she's in the congregation. Mrs. Jones, I'm going to ask you to stand, please. That's his lovely wife. We welcome you. She's a graduate of Atlantic Union College. She's earned a BA in elementary education and Andrews University MA education. And they are the proud parents of two adult children, Clifford Jr. and Jewel. Being a servant of God and a friend of people is the enduring passion of Dr. Jones, who has chaired over 30 doctor of ministry dissertations and as a pastor evangelist has led hundreds of people to a saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dr. Jones is excited to be, the sir, to be serving in the School of Theology at our Oakwood University, where God, knowledge, and ministry intersect to full Jesus' mission of hope and wholeness to all the world. He views preparing the next generation of church leaders to fulfill the gospel commission in a post-pandemic world at once sobering and stimulating. Dr. Jones, we are glad to have you. It is our pleasure to welcome you here. And I want to say to Brooklyn, but I want to say to the greater New York, Brooklyn area English ministries, churches. Will you put your hands together for him, everybody, as we welcome you to this greater New York conference. We thank you and your wife for being here with us today. And he shared with us the ordeal they went through last night. And this is how we know that he loves us. He went out his way just to be with us today. We say thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Before he comes to us, however, we are going to be blessed again with the ministry of our own brother, Odain Rodin, after which you will hear the voice of Dr. R. Clifford Jones. God bless you.
God and God alone will be the joy of all eternal and the best and worst of men can never change my father's plans for his God and God's alone oh God and God alone is fit to take the universe is wrong so let everything that lives reserve my God to wait for God and God alone God and God alone will be the joy of all eternal hope and he will be my one desire my heart will never tire of God and God alone oh God and God alone be your fear Serve my God to with praise for God and God alone. Oh God and God alone, you're fit to take the universe. Serve my gospel with praise for God and God. Let everything, everything I need reserve. and God alone. God and God alone. Let everything that had breath praise God. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I will bless the Lord at all times. How often? Come on, talk to me, somebody. How often? His praise shall continually be in my mind. What a joy and what a privilege it is to be in the house of God today. On this, the day that God hath made, a day in which we're going to rejoice and be glad. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brother Aria leader, Elder Lincoln Smith, for your kind and gracious words of introduction and for your kind and gracious invitation 
to be a part of this very special, special day. I see several in the house whom I recognize, pastors serving in this great field, whose paths crossed mine back there in Berrien Springs, Michigan. If you're one of those, just stand to your feet. Just stand to your feet. The, the preacher, the pastor of this house, Dr. Zab and others, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's good to see you. And uh, again, what a joy and what a privilege it was to have played a minor role in the formation of uh, these great preachers. Also, I'd like to recognize Pastor Everett Samuel, who stopped in briefly this morning, but is not here right now. Our paths also cross there at Andrews University. And we thank God for the fact that he has called and continues to call women to ministry. Come on, say amen. Amen. Other pastors in the house whose paths um, we may not have crossed in the classroom, but in the field, we'd like to recognize them also. Pastor Hugh Maynard Reed is in the house. Good to see you, preacher, back there. And uh, we thank God again for all of those who have served him over the years. You know, my wife and I are glad to be here today, and we shared with the pastor that we're not strangers to this congregation. I was a young pastor in the, in the Northeastern Conference when I married the former Elva Williams in 1980, and she was a teacher for the Brooklyn School. Ah, so you all didn't know that. My wife actually worked here. She taught school here for two years until our son was born in 1982. And then she said, I'm going to stay home and raise my son, our son. But she was, she was a teacher here. And when we got married in December, on December 21, 1980, the folk at the church here actually had a reception for us. Even though I was the pastor in the Northeastern Conference, they had a reception for us and uh, treated us very, very well. And so just walking into this building uh, this morning brought back memories and also reminded us that we're old. Yeah, we're all. The principal at that time was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Khan, an Indian fella from India. And I remember there was also, she kind of mentored my wife, Sister Mead. And uh, so again, we're not, we're not strangers to this congregation, Pastor. And uh, it's, it's glad to know that you are leading this congregation now and, uh, and uh, we shall continue to lift you up in praise. I also want to recognize this morning, uh, Brother, Brother Goodrich. Brother Goodrich. Brother Goodrich. See, it was, it was Abraham Lincoln who said, all I am and ever hope to be, I owe to my darling mother. But I want to say that all I've been able to do and be used by God in his work, I owe to Elder uh, Goodrich because he was uh, 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 an adult when I was a boy at the Port of Spain, San Stanmore Avenue Church in Port of Spain, Trinidad. And uh, he saw something in me, and they invited me once to do something for AY. I was a kid way, running around in short pants, and, uh, and, uh, but he motivated me. And then we had a voice of youth crusade, and they asked me to speak. I was an early teenager, and then I left, of course. But uh, uh, Brother Goodridge had a, had a role to play in my formation and in my accepting the call of God to be a pastor. And so, good to see you. Good to see you, Doc. Good to see you. Praise the good Lord. Praise.
praise, praise, praise the good Lord, Doc Goodrich. Well, as you know, I'm at Oakwood University now, the school of the prophets. Come on, say amen, somebody. The school of the prophets. 125 years ago, Oakwood University opened its doors as a training school. And for 125 years, people have been entering to learn and departing to serve. And this is the 125th year that Oakwood University has been serving, not just the North American Division, but the world. Our president, Dr. Leslie Pollard, sends his warm greetings. And uh, we just want for you to know that Oakwood is going strong. And if you have young people who are interested in a Christian education, please consider Oakwood University. I have some material with me that will be on the uh, table in the lobby as you leave if you are interested in OU, in Oakwood University. Amen? Amen. Let's thank our musicians today for their ministry. Uh, our special music, our musicians, our praise team. Amen. You got a wonderful praise team here. Let's, let's give them a round of applause for their, for their ministry. We thank God for all the servants, the, the ushers, the the deacons, the deaconesses, those who receive the offering and those who will receive the offering as you leave. And again, honor and glory to God Almighty, but we want to recognize our area leader, Elder Smith, and the uh, pastor of this house, Dr. Edley Benoit, and all of our pastors in the house serving in the great greater New York conference. Amen? Amen. If you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, as our time is running away from us, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Old Testament book of Jonah. 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 The word of the Lord, reading from the NIV, came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. The title of this day of celebration and the theme from the GC on down this year is, I will go. The title of my sermon today, however, is, Oh No, I Will Not Go. Oh No, I Will Not Go. Father God. Speak to us. Speak to us this day. Amen. The Bible, beloved, is a sacred record of God's deep and abiding love for his creation. God so loved the world. God loves his creation. The account of that love is told through psalms and proverbs and parables and poetry and story and allegory and biography. 
And whatever the genre, it's all about the love of God. The love of God. God loves create his creation, and God wants to save people. So here we have in the Old Testament this first missionary book of God dispatching someone with a word of caution, a word of encouragement. The story or saga begins, now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. And let's not rush past what theologians call a holy, this holy introduction. The very same expression is used in the call of Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Hosea and Micah and Haggai and Zephaniah and Zechariah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah as it did to these other prophets. To receive the work of the word of the Lord was the authentic mark of a true prophet. Now how and when the word of the Lord came to Jonah, we're not quite sure. What is certain, however, is that Jonah recognized the word as coming from the Lord. It was a personal word. It came to Jonah. It was a particular word. Jonah was to go to Nineveh. Not Joppa or Jerusalem. It was a purposeful word. Jonah was to preach against Nineveh. Now Amos says, Behold the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine, a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, not, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. Thank God, beloved. That we have the word of the Lord. And the word of God to Jonah was arise. Go to that great city Nineveh and preach against it. Because its wickedness is, has come up before me. What did Jonah do? God said go. Jonah said no. Jonah refused to put Nineveh preacher on his preaching itinerary. He knew that Nineveh was called for evil. Nineveh was not called a bloody city for nothing. And when Nahum called Nineveh a bloody city, he was not cursing. It was a difficult district preacher. So Jonah decided to take a cruise. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, modern day Jaffa, where he found a ship bound for that port. And paying the fear, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Notice the flurry of verbs. He ran away. He found a ship. He paid the fear. He went aboard. He sailed all to flee from the Lord. Jonah was saying in so many words, Oh no, I will not go. Jonah was saying, Nineveh, never. Now can I share, he found a ship. He was going in the opposite direction, heading for a different destination. He was trying to elude the infinite. Can I share a couple of things about Jonah's objective with you this morning? Satan, listen to me now, Satan is ever ready to provide transportation for those seeking to flee from God. Satan is ever ready to provide transportation and the means of transportation will always leave on time. But one thing is for sure, 
listen to me now, and that is the fear will always go up. Once you are on board, there is almost always a storm brewing and waiting up ahead for those attempting to flee from the Lord. Jonah encountered a storm. God did not stop Jonah until Jonah got a certain distance. Notice that Jonah did not crash on his way to Joppa. He didn't get a flat tire. He did not forget his wallet at home. God allowed Jonah to get to Joppa, find a ship, and get on board. The lesson, just because things are falling into place. Listen to me, somebody. Just because things are falling into place doesn't mean that everything is okay or that you are in the will of God. Hmm? But with God, there's always a thus far and no further. Jonah ran out of rope. And sooner or later, so will we. Hence the storm. Jonah fell sound asleep in the storm. The psalmist says that God giveth his beloved sleep. But Jonah's sleep was not the sleep of the righteous. Jonah was asleep while the sailors were afraid. Rugged and experienced, the sailors had never encountered a storm like this one before. What did they do? Each one cried unto his own God. Do I need to remind somebody that in a storm there are no atheists? Every man cried unto his own God. Now in finding Jonah sleeping on deck, the heathen sailors threw a volley of questions and commanded him, Arise! Call on your God! And the irony is that non-Israelites called on a Hebrew to pray. Did Jonah pray? We don't know for sure. We know that he prayed later, but we do not know that he prayed at this point. Now, notice the questions he was asked. What do you do? Where are you from? What is your country? From what people are you? For the first time in the story, Jonah speaks. Though the answers he gives are interesting. He answered only two of the questions. I am a Hebrew and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven. That's a lie because obedience is the highest form of worship. And he was not obeying God. He was running from God. He skirts the question about his occupation. It's a sad day in Zion when a preacher when a preacher shuns identifying himself uh, you're all getting quiet on me, but that's all right. I know you got the point. Ironically, Jonah did not want to take the word of the Lord to Nineveh, but he was forced to testify to pagan sailors. Please note that the storm made the sailors afraid, but Jonah's responses terrified them. Hmm? When they asked Jonah what they should do next, he asked to be thrown overboard. He wanted to be a martyr. Have you ever wondered why he didn't just jump overboard? If he wants to die, just jump. Jonah, jump. Can I say a couple of things here about storms before I move on? One is that some storms are caused by our own actions. Sometimes we have no one to blame for the mess we are in but ourselves. Two, our disobedience often endangers the lives of others. Sometimes innocent people suffer as a result of the foolishness that we do. Thirdly, in a storm, cargo often means little. Notice that they threw everything overboard. To save themselves. In an attempt to save themselves, they threw stuff overboard. All the stuff that we have been fighting 
to gather and to amass. Now, as a result of this storm, the heathen sailors came to know and believe in the true and living God. Ain't that some? Jonah is running from God. Jonah declared, oh no, I will not go. And God is using Jonah to bring heathen to a saving knowledge. Now, Jonah now is thrown overboard. What happened next? But the word, but the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah may have purchased a one-way ticket to Tarshish. But God was going to give Jonah a round trip. Now, skeptics, skeptics and detractors have had a field day just about here with this sea monster. But what they failed to realize is that God appointed and God ordained this sea monster. God commissioned or delegated a particular sea creature to accomplish a unique mission. And the creature is in the right place at the right time. We don't know exactly what the sea creature was. Suffice it to say that God created it and God appointed it and God situated it. In the belly of the sea creature, at the bottom of the sea, Jonah was as low as anybody can get. Have you ever been there? Are you there today, perchance? If you are, Jonah's experience speaks hope to you. Jonah became a person of prayer in the belly of the sea creature. Oh, oh he began to reach out and to cry out to God. Ellen White says that there is no time or place in which it is inappropriate to offer up a petition to God. She says, our great need is, excel, is ex itself an argument and pleads most eloquently in our behalf. Our need, whatever that might be, is reason enough to cry out to God. So Joni began to pray. This is where I like how it gets. Not only did he begin to pray, but Jonah began to pray scripture. He began to pray scripture. Jonah 2.2 2 was derived from Psalm 18.8. Jonah 2.3 taken from Psalm 88.8.6. Jonah 2.4 derived from Psalm 31.22. He concluded his prayer, Jonah 2, 6, from thoughts expressed in Psalm 30 and verse 3. Who was it that said, for every sigh, there is a psalm? Without a doubt, beloved, Jonah, though he was running from God, knew the word of God. And so I want to encourage you, if you're in the belly of the sea creature this morning, Pray out to God. Reach out to God. Cry out to God. He will hear you. And he will respond. So Jonah cried out to God. Huh? And Jonah's God heard. And when we get to Jonah chapter 3 and verse 1, the Bible reads, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. The first time, Jonah said, I ain't going. The first time, Jonah said, Nineveh, never. But the word of God came to Jonah a second time. Aren't you glad, beloved, that our God is a God of a second chance? Aren't you glad that when we run from God and we make a mess of our lives, when we reach out and cry out to God, he hears our cry and he'll give us a second chance. Truth be told, truth be told, truth be told, 
God has given some of us not just a second chance, but a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance and a sixth chance. Thank God that he's the God of a second chance. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. He's reinstated as a prophet. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Please note a couple of things. The word of the Lord didn't change. If we're waiting for God's word to change, we're going to be waiting for a long, long time. And Jonah was to preach the word that God gave him. Preachers, we need to remember that when it comes to preaching the word of God, we preachers have no discretionary power. We are to preach the word that God gives us. And what a joy and what a privilege and what an honor it is to be called by God. And to be sent on missions of mercy. Preaching the word of the Lord. Jonah got to Nineveh in record time. Come on, say amen, somebody. First he said, I will not go. And now he knows that that doesn't pay off. So he gets there and he preaches and the entire city, the entire nation goes down in, in prayer and, and, and fasting. And God spears them because God is a God of mercy. Who wants to save from the guttermost to the uttermost? And he continues today to send us, so send I you. Who will declare, Lord, I will go? Or will we say like Jonah? Or act or do like Jonah? I will not go. But it, gets, it gets even more interesting. The record says, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became very angry. The Septuagint says that Jonah was confounded. He was deeply offended and furious. And the verb used to capture his emotions is the same used to describe Cain's reaction to God's acceptance of Abel's offering. Jonah was as mad as Cain. He was so mad he could kill. He was swallowed up by something larger than the sea creature. Hmm? And why was he angry? Oh, Lord. Jonah 4, 2. Is it not what I said when I was still at home? That is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love. A God who relents in sending calamity. Divine mercy offended Jonah. In his complaint, Jonah uses adjectives that apply exclusively to God. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands and forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin. Exodus 35, verses 5 through 7. Throughout the Old Testament, beloved, we see God delighting in being merciful. God cannot and will not confine his love to a select few. God is neither territorial nor parochial. He will lavish his love and forgiveness upon people as wicked as the Ninevites. The Lord is not slack concerning his 
promise and keeping his promise. As some understand slackness. Instead he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish. But everyone to come to repentance. To all who receive him. How many? How many? How many? To all who receive him. To those who believe on his name. He gave the right to become children of God. But Jonah thought wicked people, especially those who did not look like him, should be punished. His prayer is really a self-justifying blast at God. But Jonah and the Ninevites and the Ninevites were sinners deserving divine punishment. Jonah was willing to accept his forgiveness. He just didn't think the Ninevites deserved theirs. Is there anyone like that in the house this day? As far as Jonah was concerned, God was being unreasonable. Ironically, the basis of Jonah's bitterness and resentment was the goodness and forgiveness of God. So Jonah stormed out of the presence of God, took refuge outside of the city. Jonah was one preacher who baptized an entire community and was mad. Does that make sense to you? Put the conference funds to good use. Baptized the entire city, but was angry about it. You see, he was patriotic. He was a bigot who wrapped himself in his country's flag. And we got to watch that today. We got to watch that in our communities. What is taking place? What is taking place? And so here again, the call came to Jonah. God wanted to save the Ninevites. God wanted to save a wicked people, enemies of Israel. Jonah said, I will not go. And went in the opposite direction. God caught up with him. Gave him a second chance. He delivered. Yeah, he preached. He may have preached from an unconverted heart because he's angry, angry, angry that his preaching was so powerful and poignant and, and penetrating and, 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 and led to the conversion of an entire nation. It's interesting, this small book, this short book, Jonah 1, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city. Chapter 4, verse the Lord said, he's talking to Jonah now. You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left? And also many animals? So the book begins with God talking. And the book ends with God talking. God is in control. God is sovereign. God sends. God gives a second chance. God reasons. And the question comes to us today. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Isaiah, unlike Jonah, declared, here am I, Lord, send me. Is that your response? Or will you, like Jonah, in action, if not in words, declare, I will 
not go. Whom shall I send? Who will go? Is there somebody in the house who will say, Hear my Lord, send me. Isaiah so declared. I heard someone say that way back, way back, way back, way back, when God realized that he needed a savior in the world to save humankind. A council was convened in heaven. I need someone to go. I need someone to go. And some of the patriarchs offered themselves and God declared, no, you won't do until Jesus declared, I will go. And Jesus came down here spent three years in ministry healing the sick restoring sight to the blind raising the dead because he declared I will go who will declare I will go who in the house will declare today I will will go. Who will declare, I will not be like Jonah. Declaring I won't go. Getting angry with God. Because God wants to bring into the church people who don't look like me and dress like me and eat like me and worship like me. Huh? Huh? We don't want them in here. It's all right that God will lavish his grace and mercy upon me. But not upon us. So there are two classes now or two categories. Those who will declare, I will go. And those who will declare or are declaring, I will will not go. Would to God that everyone under the sound of my voice has said, is saying, or will say, hear my Lord, send me, I will go. That's your desire, that's your wish, that's your determination, that's your decision. Just stand to your feet wherever you are. In reconsecration, rededication, I will go. I will go into the hovels of poverty. I will go beside the hospital beds. I will go in the villages. I will go where folk are crying out. To represent Jesus Christ. To speak a word. To speak a word. To speak a word. To point men and women to Jesus. Father God. We're standing in rededication, recommitment. Consecration of our hearts and lives. Because we want to go. Lord. So often like Jonah we have sought to elude you the infinite God. Thank you for the reminder today, subtly that we may run, but we cannot hide. Thank you, oh God, for the second chance to go, to go and give us a heart of love, a heart of grace, a heart of compassion. Let us know that there's a wideness to God's mercy. Oh, Lord, may we do our part. May we go, may we go and keep on going until we see Jesus coming the second time as King of kings and Lord of lords. Hasten that day, O oh God, we pray, when we shall be caught up to meet you in the clouds, in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. 
thank you. What a joy and privilege it is to be sent. So send I you. Lord, we declare, we will go. Let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Closing him for today is him 616, Soldiers in Christ. Please stand for the closing him. Number 616, Soldiers of Christ Arise. Father, we give you thanks for this gathering today. We give you thanks for your presence with us. We give you thanks for the word. We're leaving with our hearts burning with us, within us that we will go and share the good news of salvation. One more time, we ask that you will anoint us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your power. And as we share your word, Others will come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank you for using your man's servant today. Pray that you'll continue to bless him and his family. And as we leave, we ask that your presence will remain and abide with us. Thank you again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
You may be seated for a moment of meditation. Thank everyone again for being here. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sabbath and be blessed. We will also be serving lunch downstairs right after service. Oh, no. No? Oh, I apologize. Sorry.
too much, oh, too much, oh.